Now, as the country is a few weeks away from the 2024 general elections, now efforts to get to know and understand what political parties and independent candidates have in store for South Africa continues. Now, for the first time, South Africans will vote on three ballots to ensure independent candidates who are contesting the upcoming elections under no party affiliation are catered for. Now, with that being said, stick around as we speak to one of the independent candidates on his plans moving forward. Well, hi, to Melan. Good evening. My name is Tabo Mulukwane. Welcome to this edition of Soweto Today. Tonight, we are joined in studio by Tepo Marano, who is the Houting uh, Provincial Independent Candidate uh, for the elections scheduled for May 29th. And he's here to talk to us about his candidacy. Tepo, much appreciated for joining us uh, this evening on the show. Welcome. Thank you so much, Tabo, for having me on your show, and I really appreciate it. You know that uh, we, as independent candidates, we really depend on on you guys calling us to studio. Yeah. Uh, since well, we don't have money to advertise, put uh, pamphlets on street polls. It's very difficult for us. And uh, I can say the IEC has not made it very easy also because the, the education is not yet out there. People still believe that my party's name is independent candidates. Yeah. I have to do awareness as I move along. But ah, we take it, uh, at, at, you know, we take it a day ago, and uh, we are positive that uh, our people finally will 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 learn what the independents are all about. And mm. you know what? We're getting a positive, positive uh, feedback from the ground. People are excited because it's a new thing. Much appreciated for that. I mean, you know, I, I've been asking myself, you know, I mean, uh, you know, speaking to independent candidates, which is the first thing, uh, a new thing uh, that is happening uh, in these elections. But, you know, obviously, somehow, somewhere, somehow it, it is a great opportunity for, you know, general South Africans to understand that you c if you don't want to go the party route, then you can go the independent route. How has it been for you? Ah. Look, Tabo, it's, it's part of exercising the freedom of choice, the freedom of association. And uh, we thank the New Nation Movement for yeah. actually taking this all the way to Concord. We say thank you, thank you to them. And uh, it, was, it was so good that we saw uh, this kind of uh, feedback. Uh, from uh, uh, from the society. I mean, there was 42 of us that initially uh, sent through their candidacy, but unfortunately only 11 of us made it. But I can assure you now, uh, the change that has come, it's, it, it shows that the country is evolving into a new era of politics. We are the new players. Yeah. We are called the underdogs. I mean, you, you decided to, 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 to become an independent. You know, I've been meaning to ask that qu this question to you, that why the independency and then not the, uh, I mean, as you're saying, we are the new uh, players and stuff. Um, uh, people would think that, look, uh, you know, we know the usual norm of, poli of political parties and stuff, but how did you come to decide uh, that, look, I just want to stand uh, as an independent candidate? Look, it's two ways, Tabo. Um, firstly, I'm, I'm a community leader myself. Uh, I'm, part of, I'm, I'm, I'm from the grassroots. Yeah. Uh, I'm part of the CPF where I come from. I'm a leader of the CPF. I'm a leader of uh, a body corporate in my estate. Uh, so I've been doing so much for the community in Pretoria. Uh, mainly, that's where my work have, uh, is been seen on the ground, and uh, quite a, a few publications has came through to come and confirm if yeah. those things were done. And uh, obviously, we will see them; they will be shown what I've done. So, my community said to me, "Tepo, look, we are very proud of how far you have come. You've grown into the society, into the community. You've become a father figure for for most of our kids. I mean, our kids." They, 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 they want tap or to come because mm. we have built playing parks, you know, where kids can play, you understand? So they said to me, look, there's this uh, new independent candidate that the Concord has ruled over, the president is about to sign it into a bill. So how about we go look for signatures for you, yeah. we contribute money, then we can send it to the IEC. Are you ready for that task? And I said, ah, why not? If you guys believe in me, uh, why mustn't I believe in myself? Uh, and that's how I believe, Tavo. Uh, 
-hmm. that leaders should be picked out of communities. Because if you guys decided to be brave as journalists and go and actually check if parliamentarians that are in parliament now really do have a constituency on the ground, I can tell you. None of those people are known by the constituency. They are not known by anybody on the ground. Those are people that are parachuted into positions because they are, they are loved by the political leader of that time. And uh, ups, what can we do? It's politics of today. Party politics, I think they are dying out. They are slowly becoming history in South Africa. Mm. I mean, so before we go for an ad break, I mean, I'm, I'm, I mean I've been uh, following you and just checking your work. Uh, for over some time now, and then I've seen that you've made inroads, particularly on the western side of Pretoria. Um, you know, in terms of uh, your messaging within the people, I mean, with the people uh, there in in, in Twani, um, how has it been? Have 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 they really rallied behind your message? Tabo has been so good. You know, I'm getting messages every day telling me we are behind you. We never thought you are going to go for this because mm. you are so honest. Aren't you going to be tainted? And they're going to corrupt you when you yeah. get there because you are such a guy that we can re really depend on. Are you now going to let us down when you arrive there? They have been worried, most especially because of the system that I'm going into more than uh, any other thing. But I've assured them, I told them that don't worry. Uh, the temple that you see now is the temple that is going to parliament. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm for accountability, I'm for transparency, and I'm for good governance. To me, oversight plays a very big role because, I mean, I'm from the military. People from the military yeah. have got such discipline. So the level of discipline that I have, I think, gives me, you know, some, some leverage yeah. over edge. Yeah. an edge, we can put it that way. So I'm, I'm thankful for, for the experiences that I've got in the military and working with people in the community. It has been so good. Tebo Mahano is my guest. Uh, he is an independent candidate. Uh, we're going to take a quick ad break. When we come back, I want us to touch on your commitment, uh, you know, your plans uh, for the people of this country as we are heading to the elections. We're going to take a quick ad break. When we come back, we continue with this conversation. Do stay with us. Welcome back, you're still watching. So it's today, much appreciated for joining us. My name is Tabo Malukwane. Now tonight, we're joined in studio by Tepo Marano, who is the independent candidate set to contest in this year's elections, which are scheduled to take place on the 29th of May. He's joining me in studio this evening. Uh, Tepo, now, you know, obviously we've heard a lot of promises uh, from the different political parties and some independent candidates that we've been, uh, uh, you know, um, flighting on our news bulletins and, 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 and stuff. Let's talk about your plans. What, normally we say it's a manifesto and, 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 and stuff. Um, what are your key focuses uh, as we are heading to these elections? Tabo, I'm, I'm, I'm standing on uh, three pillars, not four, uh, if not four rather. Uh, because I'm going into the provincial legislature. Yeah. So uh, the first one that I'm going to look at is to strengthen the Chapter 9 institutions. Uh, mainly, mainly the NPA and the public protector. Yeah. Because they are the ones that are responsible for actually holding executive accountable. Look, the problem that we have in this country is very, very simple. It's leadership. Yeah. It's the quality of leadership. And if we can just work on that quality of leadership, we'll be right. And how do we do that? We strengthen a body that holds them accountable so that they know that anything that they do that is wrong, there's somebody waiting to prosecute them. There's always a policeman watching over them to say, are you turning the right way or are you turning the, the wrong way? But if they are found to be in the wrong way, they should be prosecuted. And we should say we should start seeing heads going to jail. Yeah. These things of having commissions and having this report, having this, those things are just a waste of time and a waste of money. We mm. should strengthen the Chapter 9 institution, mainly the NPA and the Public yeah. Protect. How do we do that? We make sure that we secure tenure, contract tenure. When we take in a, 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 somebody like, uh, uh, what is it, a, a public protector, if it's a seven years, it should be a seven years that is in, uninterrupted. 
No matter who is in government, it doesn't really matter who should be governing. So do you think there is political interference no, no, somehow? No, definitely there is. Mm -hmm. Definitely there is. I mean, what kind of a public protector is this one now? And the last one, and the last one, from Madonzel, it doesn't really matter. Mm -hmm. They're all the same. And the NPA has got a lot of backlog in terms of cases dating back to the 90s. What seems to be the problem there? Tabo, if you guys decided one day to go speak to the NPA investigators, they will tell you we've got files that are prosecutable. We can actually start charging people. Yeah. But this, they're waiting for a command. We don't know from where. But, but that is a problem. We cannot have a country where people that ex have to exercise power and hold people accountable can't do that. It's very sad. And I wish that I can also influence policies. I remember at a provincial level, I might not be able to do that. Yeah. But I've got people like Anele um, da, that are sitting at, at National. We can push for that motion at National to say, why don't we give them tenure seven years without interference? Yeah. And the next thing, why don't we give the SIU power to prosecute? Because it looks like they're doing a very good job. They've been investigating. They've been finding maladministration. They've been yeah. finding corruption. Give them powers to prosecute. Even their asset forfeiture unit has been seizing a lot of, uh, you know, goods from people that have been alleged to have, uh, you know, been corrupt and, and stuff. But there's somewhere where they end and then it's up to the NPA to prosecute. But let's move to the second pillar there. Now, the second pillar is very simple. To me, if we do that, then it's easy. When we, we, when, when we can hold executive accountable, then it's easy to, to, to take it down. Because now we know we can hit the head. Yeah. If the president can be found with money in the matras, or if the president can be found building in Kandla home with 250 million, if we can find a deputy minister that has done this and that, we can, I can tell you, the rest of government it will easily slip out. Everybody will not start doing their job because now there's this arm that is working. Then we go to the next pillar of how now do we build our economy? We need to fix the problems in ESCOM. Energy crisis is the problem, is the biggest problem that we have. Because without it, there's no business that is want to invest. As a result, unemployment grows. So mm -hmm. why don't we do that? Why don't we go into PPPs? Because private-public partnerships are the future. And if government doesn't look into that, we'll have a problem. But in Gauteng in particular, we have to go into PPPs that stimulate our economy, which are those they're in our population. There's a lot of people in Gauteng. Mm. But why don't you use that to advantage? Why don't our public system run? Our transport system, the, private, the, the public transport system, run smoothly. We should have a lot of how trains moving into, into townships. Not your, we need proper, proper. If I'm a businessman staying in uh, Jobek, and I want to quickly go to a meeting in Polokwane. It shouldn't take me two hours, four hours. It should take me 45 minutes going in, yeah. 45 minutes coming out. If I want to go to Free State quickly, it should... So moving from Gauteng to other provinces, because if you can have a look at it, Gauteng is the capital city of Africa. Yeah. So that's where everything happens. So we need a forward-thinking premier. We need, we need somebody, yeah. We need somebody that can think out of the box. So when we've got these PPPs, then do you see that the framework is coming slowly down? We're holding people accountable. We're creating jobs. We're, taking out the, we're rooting out the, the corruption in ESCOM. Our energy crisis is becoming all right. Now we beneficiate. So, um, you know, I'm interested in finding out your view. I mean, ESCOM recently, I mean, I was speaking to them in one of the shows. They said to us that, look, we it's almost a month now without load shedding. It shows that, uh, you know, there is willingness to address the energy crisis. Hence, we have, you know, maintenances of priority and stuff. Um, do you think um, the some, somehow they're politicking? You know, you know, the ESCOM issue table, it's man-made. We, we shouldn't... Look, we are far ahead of time. Like, I mean, guys, we shouldn't be having a problem of ESCOM, of electricity. Es ESCOM is man-made. It's, it's, I think it's a way of trying to privatize. If you can look at South Africa right now, everything that government has... There's a parallel system running to yeah. it. There's private schools, there's private hospitals. Now they want to bring private energy. You see, the next thing we're going to have, a, we're going to have private streets and, and, and roads, my guy, yeah. where me and you cannot drive. That's where we're going. I can promise you that. But 
we will never arrive there. You know why? Because we are going to change. We are going to stop that. So if they want to buy ESCO, we don't have a problem. But why must they buy it at the expense of, uh, of, of, of the citizens? Yeah. Why must we suffer this way? Why don't they just propose, guys, we want to bring in other role players so that we, the, the ESCOM can have competition, right? Anybody can choose. And those uh, investors who want to come and do energy this side will rent the infrastructure of ESCOM, the rail, whatever. Whatever they come up with, experts can come and advise us. But it's man-made. The issue of ESCOM can be fixed 30 days without, without load shedding. We must think about it very well. I think it's alive, this thing. Let's hold that thought, uh, Tepo. We're going to continue as we wrap up the conversation. I want us to touch on what is your view of the state of the nation and also your plans moving forward as we are heading to the elections. We're going to take a quick ad break. We're coming back after this. Welcome back. You're still watching Soweto today. Much appreciated for joining us this evening. We are almost at the end of the show and we've been in conversation with Tepo Marano, who is a Houghton Provincial Independent candidate in these year's elections. He's my guest tonight. I mean, Tepo, um, there's, we know there's a mountain to climb uh, with these elections because, uh, I mean, independent candidates have also said that it is not a level is not a leveled playing field. I mean, you need close to 16,000 votes to get to the provincial legislature. For parliament, it's over 90,000 votes and stuff. Some, somehow, it's a bit unfair uh, if we put it uh, into uh, the numbers there. But, uh, uh, you know, I, 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 before we get into your plans moving forward, I want to understand what is your view of the state of the nation, where we are as a country currently? Tell me we are growing as a country. Uh, these changes are positive. You know, I've, 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 I was a soldier and I deployed in the TRC. I went to... Uh, there's, there, there's no governance there. Yeah. No, there everybody just does their own thing. People are just unruly. So we still have it. And, uh, and uh, South Africans adapt well to change. Uh, that's one thing I love about South Africans. Um, the state of the nation as it is now, it's very bad. We've got rotten, rotten to the core politicians yeah yeah we've got people that don't want to work for our people they're going there with parties and they are putting their friends in cabinets and it's just a tuck shop like it's a stock fell it's just a group of people having small stock fells in in parliament it's a caucus yeah yeah give family give family gathering i understand if you don't agree with us and take a party line you are out Parliament is not supposed to be like that. Parliament works like this, Tab. Mm. The, what is this? The, the, the members that have seats in Parliament, ordinarily, proportionally, they've got a constituency somewhere. Surely you can't tell me that even if we're in the same uniform in Parliament, your constituency and his constituency and his constituency want the same thing? No, they're not, they're not from the same places. Others might need water, others might need little. So it, you can clearly see that the state of the nation, it's, it's bad to a point where even parliamentarians don't know what they're doing in parliament themselves. Yeah. Hence, we need to strip them of benefits. This thing of getting premiers, members of cabinet and this, having blue lights, having, they don't even pay for school fees, they don't even pay for their houses, they don't even have load shedding. Mm. They might come here and talk about load shading, but they're talking about something that is being enjoyed by me and you. <laughs> I mean, here in the city of Joburg, they just proposed that uh, each councillor, uh, you know, within the city, uh, even those that are part of the uh, members of mayoral committee, they must have private security, like bodyguards and all these kind of things. What's your take on that? It's a problem of crime. Mm. It's a problem of crime. If they can't walk alone, what about me and you, Tab? I mean, we just heard of a shooting of a guy in Pretoria, yeah. Mashat, Amsindo. The guy's shot. So, me and you, it means, ah, when I get out of here, gone, it's gone. Then there's nothing. Also, nobody's going to say anything about it. So, they must enjoy the same pains that we're going through. I was telling them yesterday at the IEC that you are sitting in a beautiful, glamorous uh, hall. You are drinking beautiful water. It's so nice. Yeah. Our people are suffering. 
Mm. Why don't we get, go and have this IEC signing under a tree somewhere? Because there's a school somewhere in Malamolen where kids are under a tree. There's a school somewhere in Danzali where kids have to cross the rivers to get to a school. That is very painful. And you tell us that that, that is the democracy. 80% of political parties are black, Tabo, in parliament. 80%. It means they represent the majority. Mm. So why is the majority suffering? Do you tell me that these people, 80% that is in parliament, can't even agree on a single thing? No, we can't trust party politics anymore. We need proportional representative. We need people that really are from the community where they come from. Now once I go into parliament, my brother, into the provincial legislature, no, I'm not going to move. I'm going to stay where I stay with my people. I'm not going to have bodyguards. No. I've never done anything to them. Let's talk about your plans now, moving forward. We are heading to the elections and 30 days from now on. Um, what's been happening? Um, are you on the ground? And many obviously you've raised concerns that, uh, you know, political parties obviously have got deep pockets to have placards everywhere, posters, uh, you know, on the freeways. Uh, you see them everywhere. And obviously it's not the same when it comes to independent candidates there. How are you rolling out your campaign? And also what would be the message to the people as we are heading to these elections before I let you go? Look, uh, what a good question, by the way, Tab. We don't have big, big pockets. We are relying on people like Soweto TV. Mm. This is a very good opportunity for us to speak to the community. And I thank you for that as to Soweto TV. We rely on people that are fed up with political parties. Everybody, when they see placards there on the freeway, that they, they get annoyed. Like, people are just angry at them. Mm. So they are good. Let them put their posters on, on uh, street poles. They are only making people more angrier. So we are rolling it out on uh, social media. We are rolling it out by word of, uh, word of mouth. I go into places I've got uh, agents around Gauteng who goes door by door educating people about independent candidates because... People don't even know who we are. So social media is playing a very vital role. But community radio stations, community TVs like this one are really meaningful to us. And we, we are appreciative of that. Don't worry. Political parties are not going to end up anywhere. Mm. They are just wasting their money. They are wasting their funders' money. They, their funders must just know today that these people are not going to pay them back. They're not, a lot of them are not going to go into parliament because people are fed up about them. So... Um, I'm on the ground. Uh, I've got a lot of interviews. I've got a lot of uh, engagements that I do with stakeholders, your black business forums, your black, uh, black management forums. Your, I engage with professionals. I engage with artists. I engage with uh, middle class because I strongly, strongly yeah. stand for the middle class. I believe that it's, a, it's one of the classes that if we cannot protect... Uh, soon we're going to have the super rich and super... Uh, we're actually even there, where we've got the super rich and the super poor. I can tell you, me and you, I belong in the super poor. So yeah. next time, you're going to see professionals, accountants, doctors, committing silly, silly crimes, petty crimes. You'll find them doing cash in transit. You'll find soldiers, part of the people that are stealing admirals. You'll find police, part of the people that are selling drugs. Why? Because... The, the system is just dysfunctional. The middle class doesn't have money anymore. Nobody's taking care of it. Triple BE has failed. I mean, Triple BE was supposed to be that catalyst. It was saying, how about we make a black man or a black woman a millionaire? But that millionaire must give back to the community. Like white people. White people used to get tenders, used to be millionaires. Look at their schools. Their schools look good. Their activities are well-sponsored. We've got a lot of black millionaires none of them sponsor anything to anywhere so it's that's where we are Tebo Mahano um, you know good luck to you as you are heading to the elections we will be uh, watching a close eye into your campaign and stuff and hopefully we will have you back on the show uh, post the elections uh, uh, as you will be there at the Houting Legislature much appreciated for joining us no thank you so much and the next time I come here I'll be the premier uh, I was busy talking to some guys that we need to get proper cleaning material for yeah. my office when I ascend office of the Premier of Gauteng. Thank you so much.
much appreciated. That, that was uh, Tepo Magano, who is an independent candidate and will be contesting this year's elections set to take place on the 29th of May, gunning for a seat. As you heard, uh, he's saying that he will come back as the Premier there. I mean, Parliament is seeing diversity for the first time since democracy as 11 independent uh, you know, have fearlessly asserted to make their mark on the ballot on election day. Well, on that note, uh, that's how we wrap up uh, today's episode of Soweto Today. Remember, we love hearing from you. So please feel free uh, to talk to us about this episode. Send us an email at Soweto Today at SowetoTV.ca. Alternatively, call us or WhatsApp us at 0815318857. Okay, so Nakitabo Mulukwane from the rest of the team and myself. It's good night and thank you for watching.